Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. I plead the blood of Jesus over this video and everyone that's watch, watching today. Thank you for subscribing to my channel. I love you all in Christ. I'm going to be reading the book of Luke, chapter 8. Many women ministered to Jesus. Now it came to pass afterward that he went through every city and village preaching and bringing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him. And certain women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom had come seven demons, and Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod Stuart, and Susanna, and many others who were provided for him from their substance. The Parable of the Sower And when a great multitude had gathered, and they had come to him from every city, he spoke by a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed, and he sowed. Some fell by the wayside, and it was trampled down, and the birds of the air devoured it. Some fell on rock, and as soon as it sprang up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up, and with it choked it. But others fell on good ground, sprang up, and yielded a crop of a hundredfold. When he had said these things, he cried, he who has ears, let him hear. The purpose of parables. Then his disciples asked him, saying, What does this parable mean? And he said, To you it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to the rest it is given in parables, that seeing they may not see, and hearing they may not understand. The parable of the sower explained. Now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God, those by the wayside are the ones who hear. Then the devil comes and takes away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. But the ones on the rock are those who, when they hear, receive the word with joy, and these have no, have no root, who believe for a while, and in time a temptation fa falls away. Now the ones that fell among the thorns are those who, when they have heard, go out and are choked with cares, riches, and pleasures of life, and bring no fruit to maturity. But the ones that fell on the good ground are those who, having heard the word with a noble and good heart, keep it and bear fruit with patience. The parable of the revealed light. No one, when he has lit a lamp, covers it with a vessel or puts it under a bed, but sets it on a lampstand that those who enter may see the light. For nothing it is secret that will be not be revealed, nor anything hidden that will not be known and come to light. Therefore take heed how you hear, for whoever has to him more will be given, and whoever does not have, even what he seems to have, will be taken from him. Jesus' mother and brothers come to him. Then his mother and brothers came to him and could not approach him because of the crowd. And it was told to him by some who said, Your mother and your brothers are standing outside desiring to see you. But he answered and said to them, My mother and my brothers are these who hear the word of God and do it. Wind and wave obey Jesus. Now it happened on a certain day that he got into a boat with his disciples, and he said to them, Let us cross over to the other side of the lake. And they launched out. But as they sailed, he fell asleep, and a windstorm came down on the lake, and they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased, and there was a calm. But he said to them, Where is your faith? And they were afraid and marveled, saying to one another, Who can this be? For he commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him. A demon-possessed man healed. Then they sailed to the country of Gadarenes, which is opposite the Galilee. And when he stepped out onto the land, there met him a certain man from the city who had demons for a long time, and he wore no clothes, nor did he live in a house but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out, fell down before him, and with a loud voice said, what have I to do with you, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. 
for he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out on the man. For it had often seized him, and he was kept under guard, bound with chains and shackles. And he broke the bonds and was driven by the demon into the wilderness. Jesus asked him, saying, What is your name? And he said, Legion, because many demons had entered him, and they begged him that he would not command them to go into the abyss. Now a herd of many swine was feeding there on the mountain, so they begged him that he would permit them to enter them, and he committed them, or permitted, pardon me. Then the demons went out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd ran violently down the steep place into the lake and drowned. When those who fed them saw what had happened, they fled and told in the city and in the country. Then they went out to see what had happened and came to Jesus and found the man from whom the demons had departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. They also, who had seen it, told them by what means he who has demon-possessed was healed. Then the whole multitude of the surrounding region of the Gadarenes asked him to depart from them, for they were seized with great fear. And he got into the boat and returned. Now the man from whom the demons had departed begged him that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your own house and tell what great things God has done for you. And he went his way and proclaimed pardon me, throughout the whole city what great things Jesus had done for him. A girl restored to life and a woman healed. So it was when Jesus returned that the multitude welcomed him, for they were all waiting for him. And behold, there was, came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue. And he fell down at Jesus' feet and begged him to come to his house, for he had an only daughter, about twelve years of age, and she was dying. But as he went, the multitudes thronged him. Now a woman, having a flow of blood for twelve years, who had spent all her livelihood on physicians and could not be healed by any, came from behind and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her flow of blood stopped. And Jesus said, Who touched me? When all denied it, Peter and those with him said, Master, the multitudes throng and press you, and you ask, Who touched me? But Jesus said, Somebody touched me, for I perceive power going out from me. Now when the woman saw this, that she was not hidden, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared to him in the presence of all people the reason she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. Praise Jesus. And he said to her, Daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. While he was still speaking, someone came from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying to him, Your daughter is dead. Do not trouble the teacher. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him, saying, Do not be afraid. Only believe, and she will be made well. When he came into the house, he permitted no one to go in except Peter, James, and John, and the father and mother of the girl. Now all wept and mourned for her. But he said, Do not weep. She is not dead, but sleeping. And they ridiculed him, knowing that she was dead. But he put them all outside, took her by the hand, and called, saying, Little girl, arise. Then her spirit returned, and she arose immediately, and he commanded that she be given something to eat. And her parents were astonished, but he charged them to tell no one what happened. If you're struggling with... Um a physical ailment today. I just, uh, I want to pray for you because Jesus is the great physician. In Isaiah 53, 5, it says, by his stripes, we are healed. Also, the Bible says when two or more come together, that he's in the midst of us. I invite the Holy Spirit and I ask him to be in this prayer with us. And we are children of the most high God and God wishes us to be healed and bless Jeremiah twenty nine eleven says that God has plans to prosper us and never harm us to give us a future of hope. Amen. So right now I just decree and declare health over you, health over your body, your mind, your soul, and your spirit in Jesus's name and power and authority and blood. Amen. 
every cell in your body in alignment with his will. Every cell in alignment with God's will, which is a perfection. Brothers and sisters, we were formed in his image. He formed us in our mother's womb. And he knew his plans to prosper us and not harm us. And he has plans for all of us, brothers and sisters. He loves us all very much. He is not a respecter of persons. Amen. So I just decree and declare health unto you. Health unto you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Just like the lady who had the disease of bleeding. When he said, do not be afraid, only believe and, and she will be made well. Verse 50. 850. So I praise Jesus ahead of time for health. Also for finances and blessings, Father God, in alignment with your will. Father God in heaven wishes to bless his children in every way. One day he told me recompense, reconciliation, and restoration. Amen. He can give us back what the enemy has stolen times a hundred. Amen. Father, we receive your blessings, but we give you all praise, all honor, and all glory. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Jesus, we thank you for healing us and sealing us with your blood. We thank you for protecting us and putting a hedge of protection around us, around our families. Amen. You put a fire, a ring of fire around us, Father God. You send your holy angels to guard us and protect us in all ways. Psalm 91.11. We claim Psalm 91 over our families right now in Jesus' name. Amen. We love you, Jesus, and we thank you for your mighty hand, your mighty pinion, your mighty wing, Jesus. We put on the full armor of God every single day, Ephesians 6, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth around our waist, the sword of the Spirit, which is the holy word of God. You shot our feet in perfect peace so that we may share the gospel of Jesus Christ, the shield that destroys every fiery dart from the enemy. Father, we are covered from head to toe with your protection, Jesus. Jesus, you are our rear guard. The holy angels of God are our front guard. You are our tent peg. We thank you for all the many blessings you've given us. We praise you for them. We glorify you for them. We honor you for them. We thank you for them. All the blessings, Father. All the healings, Father. All the signs and wonders, Father, because you said that we will do the things that you've done and even greater. We thank you, Jesus, for your promises. We thank you, God, for your son. We thank you for the word of God, which is our, shore, our sword. And we want to sharpen our sword. And we want to learn our sword so that we may honor you. You are the word, Father. We love you. We thank you. We praise you today and every day. And even if, uh, if we don't see the healing immediately, we know that your word doesn't go out and come back void. Isaiah 55, 11 says that God's word goes out and does not come back void. So we stand firmly on this word that you want us to be whole and healed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I love you, brothers and sisters in Christ. I was trying not to make this video too long, but I love you and I thank you and um, I just bless you with this prayer in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Glory be to God. Amen.